Okay, so now we're going to take a look at an example of making a object and class diagram for a simple example. We're going to use the game Frogger, which was a 1980s hit, which you can see on the link on the next slide. But essentially, you use a... Um, you, uh, it is a game where you control the movement of a frog across a three or four lane motorway. Uh, cars go left and right on the motorway down their individual lanes and you control when the frog hops. You win if you get across to this side of the motorway up here up the top. And our first question, if we want to start to modularize and break this problem up, is what are our objects in this world? For this example, I hope it's reasonably easy, easy to see, the objects will be our frog, our cars, and probably the lanes on the road and to either side. Um, and what we can immediately see, just from listing what we see on that diagram that I've given you, is that there are groups of objects already. There are groups of cars, there are three of them, there's only one frog, and there's at least three, possibly five lanes, if we include a lane at the top, a grassy strip at the top, and a lane at the bottom where the frog starts. So we can label them, um, as I've done here. I've called them car one, two, and three. And just to make it clear, those objects are all separate because they share a lot of similar properties. I've grouped them in a class called car. Frog, for example, is the only one of its class. So the object is called frog and the class is called frog. And on the right hand side there, you can see lanes. I've got five different lanes, but they are all objects of the broad class called lane. Now I've written this over, I've drawn this, sorry, over our original diagram, but I don't need to. I can divorce this from any real world depiction of our problem and write it out like a proper object diagram, which is what we have on the right hand side here. The same thing written out, but without any mapping. So where things are appear in space has no physical relevance. What we then do is ask, okay, what attributes do these objects have? Now, in the real world, if I asked you what attributes does a frog have, you might say, oh, it's green, it weighs 200 grams, uh, has four legs, that kind of thing. Now, those are all true, but what we're really asking here is what attributes do the objects have that are relevant to this problem? In this example, the frog, for example, will have a couple of attributes. The first is what lane is it currently in? What is its current position? And is it alive or dead? Has it been hit by a car or not? Uh, the cars, for example, they should have uh, the attribute what lane they're in. They might have a speed, they might have a direction, and they might have a position from the, on the screen from left to right. What attributes do the lanes have? Well, we might want to give them numbers, but other than that, I can't see any clear attributes they would need for this particular implementation and so if we want to draw those attributes out using UML object diagrams we do them like this so below our kind of object name and the class that it's attached to we write down our attributes lane position direction you can see there for car 3 and then we give the specific value so lane car 3 is in lane 3 it's traveling east and it has a position of 350 and I've done the same thing for all the other car objects uh, and the frog object the final thing we need to do is ask what is the relationship between these objects? So is there a relationship between the frog and the car? No. Is there a relationship between the car and a lane? Yes. And so diagrammatically we draw them like this. They're just little lines that connect objects to other objects and then we give that relationship called an association, we give it a name. But what you have noticed if you go back to the previous example is you can see that our lane attribute has disappeared. Where is it gone? Well, it's been replaced by an association because it turns out that many attributes are actually just associations between different objects. And so what we can do is instead of including them as attributes, we include them as associations instead. And that's it. That's really how you can create a simple object diagram uh, for a simple game like Frogger. In the next video, we'll take you through upgrading that to a class diagram. But hopefully you can answer some of these questions here now.